examination of the chest. Some commonality to the parts, but the focus is more on the lungs, right? The patient having cough, having shortness of breath, having breathing difficulty. Uh, it's good. It's, I never saw doctors getting confused to ask me the exam. I shared some of the things that might be a little bit kind of confusing for you guys, like gait and balance. I send a specific gait and balance, and I want all of you, please, please, please watch it and rehearse it a couple of times. The patient, that's mainly neuro examination, but specifically with the focus on gait. There are two British guys, both of them are medical students, and they are doing it in about six minutes, right? And it's one of the best videos that I could find for you. It was gait and balance in it, right? So watch them and rehearse them a couple of times, please. So in the chest, again, like any other, like any, again, chest is mainly long, a little bit touch of the heart, right? That is the whole thing. Also, I told in history taking a physical examination, whenever you're checking lungs, you're checking the legs as well. Whenever you're asking about the legs, you're asking about the lungs as well. The patient having chest pain, a shortness of breath, check actually asked about calf pain, calf swelling, and vice versa. The legs and lungs being checked, being asked, being examined together. The thing is, I will not jump from examining the chest, jumping the calf because it's a little bit disorganized, but I definitely move towards that, right? So, uh, that's why I'm not going to tell me everybody to me today. But I'm not timing myself right now because I want to explain. So, but don't do it to it. Do it and I'll send it. Do it, do it and I'll send it. I will send it to the group as well. So, uh, your name is Mo, and I am Dr. Nick. I'm examining Mo, 25. The patient is having chest pain, shortness of breath, and cough. Let's say cough and sputum for the last. Days, right? So I am examining more 25 with cough and Dr. Silliman. One of the doctors is reporting, and I, I, I told you send it to the group, and I send it to the group. So I am checking the patients. Uh, I'm examining focused examples. Uh, good afternoon. I am Dr. Mistel, the physician in charge today. Your name and something related as well. Yes, I am Mo. How do you want to do that? Mo, Mo is fine. Is my voice loud enough? You have to ask them. No, it's not. Okay. Three, two, one. I am Dr. Nixa. I am the physician in charge. I was asked to do examination on your lung and your chest. In the next eight minutes, I will take a look. I will listen, I will observe, I will tap, I will do some maneuvers. At any point that you have any pain or discomfort, please let me know. I, my, my hand was on, my hand was on the patient's shoulder, but I, I, on the exam day, I never, on the exam day, before telling the patient, I told him, yeah, it's too, too friendly. It's too friendly because the exam is too friendly, right? So before, before starting the examination, do not touch the patient. So it's a little bit too friendly and it can be penalized. So basically, uh, Remember that these, these things. So when I tell them, is that okay with you? Yes. Okay. Can I have your name and your age? Um, How do you want me to ask? No. Okay. At any point before any pain or discomfort, let me know. I will stop at that point. I will report my findings to the examiner. Is that okay with you? Yes. Okay. I want to start. I want to start the examination of the patient. We're actually looking at the patient journal period. The patient is sitting in front of me and comfortable. Are you in any pain? Yes. What is the best position for you? Is it okay for you to sit? That's okay. Can you bear with me for the next couple of minutes to examine you? Then if you need any pain medication, I might be able to give pain medication. So I try to be empathetic to the patient as well. I took which pain position is good for the patient. I want to actually do eight minutes, so I take my a little bit of my sweet time and now we have the patient vital. Somebody is giving me the vitals or somebody is telling me to check it by myself. 95% if it is at eight minutes, they will give me some of them or some of them are at the door, right? And I will need, I need to check the rest of them by myself or whenever I comment on the poll, if they, if I have the poll, based on the information at the door, the patient with the saturation in the room here was 85%, the patient respiratory was 18 per minute, 
the patient was in the tachycardic, the patient blood pressure was stable, and the patient was 38.5 temperature. Is it still the same? Yes. Yes, two minutes, okay. So is it still the same? So is, is the patient stable enough to be examined if you want to like that, or are you comfortable? Can you bear with me for the next time? That is kind of getting sure that the patient is able to tolerate your examination, right? When my examination is over, I might be able to give the patient oxygen as well to actually raise their oxygenation level. So that is really not more than that. This is the maximum in a physical examination. We are not expecting even that, right? I know in medical school, this is a little bit different. In the medical school, exam is a little different. On the exam day, it's the agenda of this patient. It's physical examination, that's physical exam. Be sure about it, right? Be sure. So, in general inspection, I will actually look at the patient. The patient is sitting comfortably. <laughs> the patient tell me that he's short of breath. I a little bit. The patient with saturation was 85 percent in the air. I'm checking the patient's face. I may check your eyes as well. So, we'll put your eyes down. I am checking for any conjunctival. Hey, I'm looking for any for any illness. I'm looking for eyes. The skeletal for any icterus. I am checking the patient's actual posture. I, I want to feel the end. Are you in any pain that I feel? Yeah. What about now? What about here? I am looking for any tenderness in the patient's chest, right? Okay. I'm, I'm actually, ideally, I need to check the patient's neck in the 45 degree position. But right now, in my general inspection, I don't see any baby to distension. In my general inspection, I don't see any swelling, any erythema. Any deformity, any swelling, any scars from the past. I'm checking the posterior, lateral, and anterior view of the patient. Again, guys, I'm taking my sweet time because I have eight minutes. If I don't have that much time, I want to squeeze everything. I'm looking at the patient, generally speaking, the patient is sitting in front of me, the patient doesn't look agitated, and in general inspection, I don't see any visible abnormality. So, again, you can talk about pectus. Uh, uh, as you see on the exam, excavate on Don't remember those. Yes. I am, I am not joking with you. Those things, do not remember them. Pectus excavate on Texas Parinaton. Do not remember that. Especially on the exam day when you are in the rush. Remember those things, right? So avoid. I don't see any abnormality in the chest, right? That's it. No back. Maximum thing that you might be able to say that is barrel chest. Pectus excavate on pectus, pectus perinatum. It's really difficult for the exam to even remember that. Also, some maneuvers like diaphragm excursion. It's not even doable. It's not even doable, guys. Do not even waste your time. It's not even doable. There are other things that God forbid you will miss, and then you will bang your head to the wall, right? So that was inspection. And I did palpation at the, at the same time. There wasn't any tendons, right? Are you comfortable like this? Because I want to continue an examination like this. I didn't want to change it. Okay. Yeah. okay. So now I want to tap on the patient's chest. I am looking for any abnormal percussion sounds. Again, ideally, percussion should happen in the lying down position, but I will, not, I will do it only while the patient is sitting. Again, ideally, I want the patient to lie down, but I don't want to change it. All the time, I might be asking you to sit again. But again, if, if there, you are doing things that you need to change the patient's position, right, try to do everything at the same time. For example, all the lying down things at the end when the patient is lying down, all the sitting up things at the end the patient is sitting up, right? One time changing the position of the patient might be okay, but if you do it constantly, it will be really disorganized, right? Six minutes already done while I'm talking. So basically, now I want to percuss. When you're percussing, guys, Percuss not on the ribs, in between the ribs. The patient will be exposed. Right now, I don't want the exposure. In, right? If the patient doesn't have any tendons, the patient resonance, sound, warm, wild percussion, right? You want the two? You want the two? Yes. I will check the floor. You want the distance at the other side. Up, middle, base. Up, middle, base. Whatever you are doing, guys. Up, middle, base. Back the same, up, middle, base. Ideally, I want to do it actually on the posterior side as well, but I will skip that part for saving time, right? So whatever even you're doing for saving time, save confidently so they know that you're doing your stuff, right? So especially if I have four minutes, if I don't find any abnormality, right? Ideally, you need posteriorly as well, but 
but for saving time, I will skip that part. So it's mentioning it. So you are telling them that you know what you're doing, right? Now, I want to ask a case, right? I want to ask a case. I did, I actually did the inspection, I did the calculation, I did the percussion. Now, I want to ask a case, right? <clears throat> for ask a patient of everything that I need to ask a case, I will do at the same time. For example, even if I want to actually check the blues on the neck, I can do it right now. I give you, I want to check the patient JVP, the 45 degree position. I will do that when the patient is lying. Now that I will like make the patient lie down. So I will do no JVP distension in the upright position, right? Now I want to check, I want to listen, see if I'm putting one in and one out a little bit. So basically I can communicate with the exam, right? I will use the bell of my let's go check for employee, no worry. Now I want to listen to the patient's chest, right? I will actually do it from the front and from the back. I will check the upper, middle, and what is going on. Guys, can you hear us? Yes, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. It's locked. No, it's the first one. Okay. I think it's okay now. I think this will be fine. Video doesn't show at the, video does not show at times. I was not actually I was not doing the video. I was actually just somebody was just holding it. Can can you see us? Can you hear us now? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, so yes. So I will listen the back. I will It's not, especially when you're standing. So I'm listening both sides. I'm not looking at the people in my eyes. The lungs. I'm talking to both sides. There is flat held and there is easy in the, for example, right side of the face of the lung, right? For example. I don't care. In case, in case I, I want to address my, or something to examine myself, to examine my cell, I am looking for any. I am looking for any one kind, any veil, any visas. The exam is telling you there is, for example, the exam is telling you there is, for example, one kind and visas in the face of the lung in the right side, right? I will do the same thing from the front as well, right? I will compare both sides. One, I will take the breath in, down, I did the lines. Okay, I checked up, middle, and face as well. And I try to do it symmetrically on both sides. I am looking for any abnormal sounds, right? And the patient, when I was doing that, the patient's chest expands towards fine. Then you take it, I make a fold in the patient back. I will take them in the in here, in the back. I will ask them to take a deep breath. Patient chest expansion is normal. Now, I when you feel my chest, it's 99. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Then, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. increase, for example, increase vocal parameters in that region, the same region that I heard abnormal sounds. So probably consolidation. Whenever you, whenever you actually feel my, my hand, I'm using the edge of my hand. Can you repeat the same? 99. One more time. Can you say P? And this side? Egophony, tactile premises, vocal premises, this kind of stuff. Now, I will listen to the patient chest as well, walk part as well. Not the whole thing that you do for heart with that patient, right? But if that patient is can do. I'm checking the mitral. Tricuspid, pulmonic, and aortic region of the patient, A, B, A, B, C, M. All for the decisioners, A, money. M is at the level of the nipple. Then I come to this acuminal level. Then I move up to the left side, which is pulmonic, then to the right side, which is aorta. All positions, A, money, right? So I actually am looking for any any uh, murmur, no S3, no S4, any murmur. I am actually checking for any. I will use my I will use my right hand. I will use my right hand, the palm of my hand, for the heat spread. Any any right ventricular heat, any frill, no, no, thank you so much. I want actually I want to check for central as well. 
Doctors, any questions about this? Cardiovascular, cardiovascular and pulmonary has a lot of commonalities. They have a lot of commonalities. At the end, when they ask you about what to do with the patients, you have a patient, 25 year old, right? 25 year old, you found vocal trematus positive, tactile trematus positive, egophony positive, looks like low bar pneumonia. The patient was a little bit low in auto saturated with the O2 oxygen, right? Let's say 85% was too much. Let's say patient auto saturation is 92%, for example. The patient otherwise healthy. The patient is a young patient with lower pneumonia. How would you approach this patient in the post post encounter? Oh, the, the vital signs were at what I showed you, 38.5, the blood 